Previously on Fizzle Plays. I'd be more scared, but that first scream reminded me of Goofy um, when he accidentally hurts himself. Now, back to the present. That is not dead, which can eternal lie. And with strange eons, even death may die. Chapter 6 The Abyss Holy shit, we're underwater! What? That's awesome! Oh my god, we're swimming around! <laughs> hey guys, sorry about the delay. Uh, things have been kind of... You know, a lot of big changes going on right now, but we're back on track, and today we're going to be diving right into the abyss. Oh boy. Alright. There's a lot of fish around. It's, that's great. Let's... Yeah, that was a nice sound. I guess, which way am I supposed to go? Do I try to go up? Do I try to go down? I don't really know what I'm supposed to do here. <laughs> do I catch a fish? I, I can't catch a fish. What are you? What are you? You're nothing. You are nothing to me. Oh, I guess I go left. That's counterintuitive. Uh-huh. going deeper and deeper into this underwater cave. I'm gonna find Cthulhu, aren't I? I really hope not. There's an eel there. What are you? You look like some sort of machine. You are red, glowy. Oh boy. I can't go down that way. Can I interact with you? No, no I cannot. Good to know. Good to know. Can I go this way? I can to an extent, but not quite. Hey, fishy. I can go this way, though. Downwards. Hey, there is a dead body floating on the right, and that fish has a really weird looking face. It's good to know. You know. Drain the water and remove the diving gear. Sure, why not? Let's, uh... Let's continue our journey into the underwater city. Climb down these stairs. Jellyfish! Oh, hey! There's another person here. Where are you going? I want to say hi. It's been a while since I met another person. I'll... yeah, I guess I'll read it. Captain Theodore Felding, September 2nd, 2007. One of my biggest fears is deep water. Ironic when you consider the fact that I am now working on a mining station thousands of feet underwater in the Mariana Trench. That's a really, really deep trench. In case you guys didn't know that. I have always wondered why I was afraid and I reached a simple conclusion. The true fear presented here is actually going down beneath the surface into the depths. It's a combination of all our most common fears. Number one, fear of the dark. When you're at the bottom of a body of water, you can't see anything. It's pitch black. Have you ever tried to swim as far down in a lake as you can? It gets really dark and cold really fast about 10 feet down. But even that's nothing compared to the deepest point on the entire crust of the Earth. Located at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean, the Mariana Trench, which is 38,000 feet. If you put Mount Everest at the bottom of the trench, the top of the mountain would still be over a mile below the surface of the ocean. Everything below you is complete darkness. 
and this definitely plays into our collective fear of the dark. And then there's a nice little drawing of an anglerfish right there. How cute. I like anglerfish. They're weird. Just like me. Fear of suffocating. Suffocating. <laughs> Have you ever gotten to the point where you swam down too far in the swimming pool? And you seriously considered the fact that you might not make it back to the top before you ran out of breath? If you've ever been roughhousing as a kid with blankets and pillows, and you accidentally got pinned down inside of a sleeping bag or something, and you get to that point where laughter temporarily turns to screaming, you know what a scary concept not being able to breathe is. Even if you have a scuba gear with you down in that deep dark abyss, there's a chance that Valve could pop out or you could run out of oxygen. You can't see and you can't really take a deep breath. Could it get worse? Oh, yes. Three, the fear of the unknown. There are over one million species of creatures in the ocean, and scientists estimate that there are an additional nine million yet to be discovered. That means we only even know what 11% of the creatures in the ocean are. Most of the beings in the ocean are things mankind has never even seen or heard of. Who knows what could be down there? Think about a time when you were walking in a dimly lit basement, trying to find something. All of a sudden, something brushes against the back of your neck. They become airborne, similar to a frightened cat, and instantly turn around and shine their flashlight to see what it was. But it's never actually anything scary. But in deep water, it's always something scary. It's dark. You can barely breath. <laughs> Something just touched you and you have no idea where they just went. But there's more to fear, I'm afraid. Number four, the fear of flying insects. Imagine that, as you're walking along, all of the beetles and scorpions crawling along the ground, the huge, black, hairy spiders that are hidden from view in the cracks, and the slimy worms and snakes that are burrowed beneath the ground simultaneously started flying anywhere they wanted. That is what the bottom of the sea, without water, would be like. For the strange creatures underwater, there is no up or down. Even the manliest men, even though they appear to be calm, quickly tense up and become filled with a secret fear that the bug might land on their eyeball, or fly into their mouth, or up their nose or in their ear, and that's why men try so hard to kill them. Unfortunately, in deep water, you can't see any of the undiscovered freakish flying creatures that brush past your body as you grasp at your suffocating throat. Number five, the fear of being caught. Imagine, if you will, that you're running from a bear. You will be eaten if you are caught, and it doesn't help that bears can run faster sideways than the fastest human can run forward. I'm not sure. I guess that's true. When you're at the bottom of the sea, everything that is around you is built to move in the water. That is true. They evolve that way. If something truly frightening like a shark or a giant squid caught sight of you, that's the wrong sight, but whatever. You could turn the other way and flail about all you want, but the monster will catch up with you in a split second. You can't get away from anything. Even if you have the wherewithal to see and breathe, breath, 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 you couldn't run from danger. It would simply find you and devour you. Nom, 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 nom. There are lots of places that I wouldn't want to be, such as trapped in a burning house or alone in the vacuum of space. Space. But in the burning house, at least, I could see. And in space, at least there aren't any creatures that could get me, that you know of. There are no other places in the universe that combine as many common fears as seven miles below the surface of the Pacific Ocean. It is because of the combination of all of these fears that I am so horrified by the deep water. Not really sure what that's supposed to be a drawing of, but I'm sure it's some sort of deep sea creature. Alright, that was a fun little... Fun little, uh, yeah, that. 
All right, I guess um, I can't go down, so I guess I will walk towards this person and see if I can find them and say hi. What the fuck is that? That is a gigantic anglerfish. Holy crap. All right, I just jumped into the water. Please tell me the anglerfish won't catch me. How's that guy under the water without any equipment? I'm, I'm, oh. Oh, I, oh. Yep, just, just going down, slowly. I, I, oh, what the? What is that? What was that? Did I die? Did I get eated? Please tell me I didn't get eated. I don't want to be eated. Oh, this song again. What if it was asleep? It hadn't so much as breathed since I had woken up. Perhaps it was resting, believing that it had finally got me. That I was finally in its grasp. Or perhaps it was toying with me. After all, it had been doing just that for countless nights. And now, with me under it, pinned against my mattress with no mother to protect me, maybe it was holding off, savoring its victory until the last possible moment, like a wild animal savoring its prey. I tried to breathe as shallowly as possible, and mustering every ounce of courage I could. I reached over slowly with my right hand and began to peel the blanket off of me. What I found under those covers almost stopped my heart. I did not see it, but as my hand moved the blanket, it brushed against something. Something smooth and cold. Something which felt unmistakably like a gaunt hand. I held my breath in terror, as if I, I was sure it would must have now known that I was awake. Nothing. It did not stir. It felt dead. After a few moments, I placed my hand carefully further down the blanket and felt a thin, poorly formed forearm. My confidence and almost twisted sense of curiosity grew as I moved down further to a disproportionately larger bicep muscle. The arm was outstretched, lying across my chest with the hand resting on my left shoulder, as if it had grabbed me in my sleep. I realized that I would have to move this cadaverous appendage if I even so much as hoped to escape its grasp. For some reason, the feeling of torn, ragged clothing on the shoulder of this nighttime invader stopped me in my tracks. Fear once again swelled in my stomach and in my chest as I recoiled my hand in disgust at the touch of straggled, oily hair. I could not bring myself to touch its face, although I wonder to this very day what it would have felt like. Dear God, it moved.